The last Air Max model to release as part of Nike's famous Air Max line was the Air Max 2090. Six months ago, you might have seen endless reviews posted on YouTube and plenty of on-feet looks by sneaker influencers you follow on IG. From what I can tell, Nike put a great deal of effort into marketing the shoe and it was a big release for 2020. Yet, here we are today and no one is talking about the Air Max 2090. Nike has them on sale for a discount on their own site. This doesn't necessarily mean the shoe was a failure. I'm sure Nike made a ton of money off the shoe but it just didn't stir up the kind of excitement you would think an Air Max update would create. Soon to be another forgotten Air Max, the Air Max 2090 will suffer the same fate as a lot of Air Max models that have been released over the years. In this video, we'll be taking a closer look at the history behind one of those forgotten Air Max models, the Air Max 98. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Brian and my brother Nacho and I make videos on sneaker history and all things related to sneaker culture. So if you're into sneakers, then you might want to consider subscribing to this channel because we make content like this all the time and you're not going to want to miss an upload. Alright guys, with that out of the way, let's get into the history of the Air Max 98. In 1998, Pokemon had just released in the US and the country was sitting on the couch watching the Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky scandal unfold. Nike, on the other hand, was focused on keeping its customers excited. They had just released the Air Max 97 with a nearly full 360 visible air bubble and expectations were high for what they would do next. This is where footwear designer Sergio Lozano came into play. Sergio Lozano is a designer responsible for one of Nike's greatest shoes of all time. Actually, my favorite Nike shoe ever, the Air Max 95. The Air Max 95 was groundbreaking because it featured an air unit in the forefoot of the shoe and was inspired by human anatomy. Now in 1998, three years after the launch of the Air Max 95, Lozano wanted to play on the 95 shortcomings and design a new shoe, but drastic changes had already been made on the Air Max line since Lozano last worked on it. The Air Max 96, which also featured air in both the heel and the forefoot of the shoe, was a huge departure from his work on the Air Max 95. And the Air Max 97's futuristic silver bullet aesthetic, along with its debut of a fully visible air unit, made it tough for Lozano to follow up. By the way, I know a lot of you guys have probably never seen the Air Max 96 before. It's a pretty crazy looking shoe, right? The Air Max 98 featured a synthetic leather and mesh upper that was quite bulky for an Air Max shoe. Sergio Lozano added vertically ribbed sidewalls, which were similar to the 95, but these ribbed sidewalls were a little thinner. The silhouette used the same exact full length air unit from the Air Max 97, and the Air Max 98's complex lacing system was informed by Lozano's time working on Nike's ACG program. All conditions gear, if you didn't know what that stands for. The Air Max 98 released in early 1998 in several launch colorways, but the one that we refer to as the OG colorway these days is the red, white, and varsity blue pair, also known as the Air Max 98 Gundam. Legend has it, the colorway was inspired by the widely popular Japanese anime of the 70s and 80s called Gundam, a military science fiction anime that features giant robot suits, one of which was named the RX-78-2 which Lozano took inspiration from, but there's no official collaboration between Gundam and Nike. As the year went on, Nike would release several colorways of the 98, including kids versions which featured the Air Max 95 sole instead of the Air Max 97 sole. Unfortunately, the price point was one of the many factors that contributed to the Air Max 98's failure, retailing at $150, making it the most expensive shoe in Nike's catalog at the time. For context, $150 is about $225 today. Another factor that played into its downfall was the fact that the Air Max 98 had to compete with the newly released and incredibly successful Air Max Plus which came out the same year. The Air Max Plus, also known as the Air Max Plus TN, officially debuted Tuned Air, Nike's premium cushioning technology at the time. The Air Max 98 featured Tuned Air as well, but it wasn't necessarily a selling point for its release. Around the same time, Nike also released a variation of the shoe that's worth noting the Air Max 98 TL, which featured a modified air unit with additional segmentation and a redesigned upper. It was just another silhouette that drew attention away from the Air Max 98 that Sergio Lozano originally designed. Before the year could even end, the Air Max 98 was already appearing on sale racks in retailers across the country. But even at the reduced price, people still weren't buying the 98, and it was quickly forgotten as consumers moved on to the next thing. Or in some cases, they just opted for buying new colorways of the Air Max 95 and Air Max 97. And who could blame them? 
It wouldn't be until March 2014, 16 years after its debut, that we would see the first ever retro of the Air Max 98. The first retro release was the white, total orange, and metallic pair, but throughout the rest of 2014, Nike retroed other colorways of the 98. And in 2016, with Supreme hype at an all-time high, Nike and Supreme partnered up to do a pack of four Air Max 98s. Inspired by Prada's famous cup sneakers, Supreme successfully created a newfound affinity for the silhouette, setting up Nike perfectly for the 20th anniversary of the Air Max 98 in 2018. Finally, Nike retroed the OG Gundam pair in 2008 to much success. The shoe sold out immediately, and they'll run you about $400 now, and I really regret not buying a pair when I had the chance to pay retail. Today in 2020, the Air Max 98 is finally getting the love it truly deserves which has resulted in tons of releases of some of the most beautiful colorways I've ever seen. A few of my favorites are the South Beach 98s and the La Mescla pair. I mean, look at these, these are beautiful. Or how about the Charlotte Hornets inspired colorway? A lot of these are super slept on and aside from some of the OG colorways, you can find them for under retail. But hey, if you wanna learn more about the history of Nike's Air Max program, I put together this playlist with my brother Nacho of all the Nike Air Max history videos that we've done. We've done a lot of sneaker history videos, but these are specifically some of the Air Maxes we've done. My personal favorite, like I said, is the Air Max 95, so go ahead and check that out. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you over in that video. Peace.